This episode of Podtendo is brought to you by the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The number is 1-800-273-8255. There's like a joke associated with that. <laughs> I don't know. Is there a joke? <laughs> I was going to say, it's got dark all of a sudden. Well, it's not dark. I just, I don't know. It was like a, it was like a, we'll bring it up later. Let's just say. And I feel like because I'm going to say bad things, uh, I just want to throw that out there as the disclaimer off the beginning, you know? True. True. That's fair. All right. All right. Uh, so, hey guys, uh, this is the Podtendo podcast. Uh, the way this works is we're going to take about 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to talk about kind of a little intro topic. If you're not interested in listening to our ramblings, uh, maybe you can listen to the question we're going to propose. If you don't like that, just skip ahead. There'll be a sound clip which will probably be a commercial or maybe this little sound cue from the game that'll get you to show proper. So we're going to start off with, we're doing a South Park game, second South Park game. Newer games, not so much retro-y, but it's our show, so don't tell us what to do. But South Park, uh, we looked at some episodes specifically last year, one of our more popular shows ever. So we're going to take our more popular idea and condense it. So it's just at the start of one show. That doesn't sound like good advertising at all. Yeah, that's fair. Huh. Huh. Uh, so the question I asked Tyson earlier that we've kind of thought about a little bit. If you could show someone South Park, so someone has never seen South Park, and you want to show them an episode to get them into South Park to understand kind of what it is, which episode would you choose? Tyson, which did you choose? Um, I picked Le Petit uh, Tourette. All right. So quickly, what's like the three-sentence synopsis of what happens? Oh, uh, Cartman pretends to have Tourette syndrome, and basically he uses that to say whatever he wants about anybody, and then he loses kind of control of it as it kind of backfires, and he starts just admitting things. But the reason why I chose this one is because South Park usually has like a, a meaning or a point behind all their episodes, which is why they make them. Um, and the reason this one actually has gotten a lot of praise because they do a lot of f they put in a lot of effort into researching actually Tourette syndrome so it it's represented quite well in the show even though Cartman uses it just for his own personal gains and means uh yeah it actually is referenced correctly and shenanigans ensues let's just say yeah, yeah. it's great yeah, I do like that, that they're bringing awareness through their character. I mean, the joke is Cartman says whatever he wants, whenever he wants anyways. So yeah. the fact that he was going to use a disease to aid him is dumb. Yes. Right, like, just absolutely ludicrous. Okay, that's a good episode. Uh, the episode I was going to choose, just to make it a little bit more mainstream, was the episode Simpsons Did It. Ah. Uh, the reason I chose that episode was... It involves Butters, who's kind of become this, like, side villain in the series around this timeline, uh, coming up with schemes to get take over the world, but they're all in the line of Simpsons. So it's Mr. Burns' sundial and uh, the three-eyed fish. And I think as someone who's never seen South Park before, maybe you've seen The Simpsons, I'm hoping to hit, like, whatever that, what are those called? Venn diagrams? Mm, yep. people, like there's people who've seen Simpsons and people who've seen South Park and there's lots in the middle but I'm going to try and incorporate that little that little like semi-circle moon of people who haven't seen it or maybe know what the Simpsons is into the storytelling uh, as well as it deals with the boys having to get their semen out <laughs> of Mrs. Chokes on Dick's stomach so it's the boys misunderstanding of the real world and what the real world means in their kind of childish uh, fun manner, right? So, yeah, dealing with something like that. So, I think that's the episode I would choose. So yeah, those that's, are pretty, good. that's a good yeah, one. Those are good ones. Uh, I mean, if I was to like, what's the best episode of South Park? Scott Tennerman must die. Yeah, totally. It's that one's definitely, if not the best, top three for sure. Yeah, and I think that's right around the same. Mm, maybe it's the season before or it's the same season as Simpsons did it just I found a website where it has like them all listed and I've been kind of going back and watching a couple yeah so I would say those those are fairly good options yep either of those awesome uh, do you want to get right into the game or well, there's one other thing we can discuss that we can think about and our listeners can talk about 
you want to do that now uh sure and we should also throw up a spoiler warning since this is a newer game so oh when we get into the show proper i will like big disclaimer you know don't don't listen if you haven't beat it kind of thing because we're talking about the end of the game yeah totally all right uh so just spoilers not in the south park vein in the podtendo vein I haven't discussed this with you off the air. This is the first time I'm bringing this up. But how would you feel if we ran out... So we have a bunch of episodes kind of lined up. We kind of know what our schedule looks like. Up until episode 49 regularly. So on our bi-weekly schedule. And then we switched to a monthly episode. So instead of doing multiple episodes a month, we do one episode a month. About a two-hour long episode. That'd be interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, the thought process there is we already talked for at least an hour maybe an hour and 15 minutes on some of them. Like with Yoshi's Island was like an hour and 20 minutes. That just, I mean, that came out a couple like months ago. Uh, And some of them are like, do have some good uh, brevity to them. Now, if we discussed like the Wayback Machine and we added, let's say we looked at some more TV, like, uh, or maybe a current event that happened that week. And we both came up with like what we think was the funniest or strangest current event. And then actually looked at the movies quickly. I think we could probably fill out another 45 minutes. And then we're only playing a game once a month. Do you have any thoughts on that? And do the listeners, anyone listening to that is like, oh, no, I love listening to you as a show every two weeks. Because if that's the case, I have no problem doing it every two weeks. I'm just curious if we moved back, what would happen? Yeah, I mean, we could give it a, a run if the there's no listener's feedback, which there rarely is. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm not a, opposed to it. I mean, we probably have a little bit more fresh yeah. takes on things, and we can take shorter games and almost com- combine them into two hours, which, let's face it, a lot of the upcoming games we have are fairly shorter. We, we, have, we, have, we have one long one that, uh, that we need to get through, but yeah, I don't see the issue with it. Yeah, well, I, I think RPGs would still be probably two parts, so we do an RPG over like the course of two months and that sounds very very manageable yeah no that's doable yeah all right so just food for thought anyone listening if you have any thoughts or comments feel free to contact us I do have one uh listener comment as well uh one of our listeners uh going back to our Game of Thrones show we asked if they we, we should do more side quests uh the comment was she really enjoyed them. She thought that one was done really well. And she would like to see more side quest kind of more mainstream-y stuff. So, rather than just, like, the retro video games. So, there you go. Yeah. Well, maybe if we did, like, the two hours, we could do an hour of a popular topic and then get into the retro for an hour or so. Because, I mean, there is a couple movie franchises that we should work our way through. I was actually thinking about that. I haven't discussed it with you, but... Yeah, I think maybe because, you know, Star Wars is becoming a big thing, maybe try to line it up for the next, not this one, obviously, but maybe at the end of, I know this is future (laughs) problems, uh, in two winters, there's going to be the final part in the uh, the Star Wars kind of new trilogy. So we we could do like a Star Star Wars retrospective kind of thing. Interesting. I like it. For a year. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, yeah, maybe we'll, I don't know, change things up. Not that I'm bored, or I don't like doing this, or I don't like talking to Tyson. I literally was just, I wanted to play more Super Mario Odyssey and not so much of another game, and that was where the dilemma was. And I was like, man, Mario Odyssey is good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to try it out. Yeah, it's good. All right, so with that, we'll get into the show proper. Say everybody have a seen my balls, they're big and salty and brown. If you ever need a quick, pick me up, just stick my balls in your mouth. Ooh, suck on my chocolate salted balls. Stick them in your mouth and suck them. Suck on my chocolate salted balls. They're packed full of vitamins and good for you. So suck on my balls. All right, I have to do this now without a script, so we'll see how well my memory is. Welcome to the Pod Tendo Podcast, where we analyze, reminisce, and replay the glory of old Nintendo games. We can be contacted on Twitter at Pod Tendo Podcast, email us at podtendo at gmail.com, or check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash podtendo. I'm your co-host, uh, nickname pending M- Mick, and I'm joined every episode by my co-host... 
Valley Girl Tyson. Nice. Nice, <laughs> nice. I figured I might as well just call myself out on saying like too many times the last episode. Uh, I, I, that was a couple episodes ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yes. Uh, I also found that editing, if I just edit the first half of it and then just kind of let our level note conversation run freely, it only takes half the time. So I'm definitely just not editing the second half of the podcast. So if there was ever a time not to say I'm in like, second half of the podcast. Gotcha. And that's me being lazy. Plus I find like for the most part, our co- like most of the time I end up just listening and like maybe like maybe i uh, i cut out a word or an um every i don't know five minutes or so like two minutes so it's i don't know what's the difference between there's a couple of podcasts i've listened to lately where like there's one there's a south park retrospective on the new one called respect my authority mm. and one of the girls literally says like in every, or um in every single sentence and it's very infuriating and she doesn't add any like good content to the show where the other guys are dissecting and analyzing these episodes and bringing up these big things and she's like well um like i think that um like and i'm like <sighs> drives me insane mm. so you're not that bad could be worse that's fair but there was a there was a couple lines in the uh the one episode in a couple episodes where i just was gas grasping for like what i was trying to say i think it was yoshi island i was definitely trying to rem- remind myself of a uh of a level and i said like probably six times in a sentence it was outrageous so there you go you'll really yeah. really like this podcast definitely you better like it nice specifically this episode we're looking at south park the fractured butthole Brand new game came out by Ubisoft. Uh, it's in the same vein as Stick of the Truth. So this is kind of the second part of the Stick of Truth games, I guess, if you're going back and listening to them. I don't know. Maybe it's worth going back and listening to the Stick of Truth. Seeing what we, we, do we sound different a year later? I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. The release date of this game was October 17th, 2017. How long to beat has this game at? Uh, did not have any information. My time was about 16 and a half hours. Uh, and by the time I had played this, uh, there wasn't actually enough data. So I played it on the Tuesday and had it done on the Wednesday, like October 18th. Hmm. So I was at one point actually even ahead of the strategy guide online. I was just kind of using it to know, uh, like, if I kept playing right now, would I get to an end checkpoint or something like that? And at one point I was ahead of the strategy guide that was being posted on IGN. So Nice. I put in about two. 20 and a half okay. and i think i only looked at the like uh the strategy guide to kind of see where i was and how much was left so yeah perfect awesome uh so the uh, re- price at release was 79.99 if we factor in inflation today that would be 79.99 weird ebay price you can get a copy of this game for about $55, anywhere to $175 for a complete collector's edition of this game. eShop price, $79.99 on the PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, development details of this title. In March 2014, South Park co-creators Stone and Parker stated that they were open to making a sequel uh, depending on the reception of South Park, The Stick of Truth. A sequel... The Fractured Butthole was announced in June 2015. So let's just remember that. June 2015. This game was being developed by Ubisoft San Francisco for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Microsoft Windows. uh, Replacing Obsidian Entertainment. So the last game that made this was Obsidian. They made the, like, Skyrim games, right? Yeah, I want to say they made Elder Scrolls, and they also oh, made yeah. like uh, the the Fallout, or Fallout New Vegas. I want to say. Oh, so Bethesda must be an offshoot of like Obsidian, right? Yeah, I, I forget how it works, but I know Obsidian works with Bethesda. They're kind of like the alternating teams, like how Call of Duty had um, Infinity Ward and Treyarch, and now gotcha. they have Sledgehammer Games, and each one of them takes it turn basically rotating every few years gotcha gotcha uh the original title planned for this project was the butthole 
of time. However, Stone and Parker were informed that retailers would not place a product with the word butthole on the shelves. This caused Trey, uh, Trey Parker to go back to his office and work for a few hours on how to sneak the phrase onto the game title without upset, upsetting retailers. He eventually settled on butt hole. <laughs> uh, hours, hours of work. <laughs> he made millions of dollars coming up with how do you change butthole to butt hole? Uh, some people. Parker Genius. and Stone originally wanted the release date of this game was December 6, 2016. During Ubisoft's press conference at E3 2016, they announced that their blog was delayed for the first quarter of 2017 because of the development team wanted to ensure the game met the high expectations of fans. It was also announced that those who pre-ordered the game will be able to download the Stick of Truth for free. On February 9th, 2017, Ubisoft announced a further delay which its new release window uh, into the 2018 fiscal year. So, yay! PSN refunded all South Park, the Fractured Butthole pre-orders. Uh, they also removed access to the uh, South Park, the Stick of Truth, for people who got the pre-order bonus. So, that really sucks. That does suck. They didn't do that on Xbox. Huh. In May of 2017, Ubisoft released a trailer for the game announcing its release date was October 17th, 2017. It does not have any plans currently to go to the Nintendo Switch. So, sorry, Switch. You don't get South Park. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it's kind of, I feel like it's, I don't know, there must be something. I feel like there's lots of loading screens. So obviously this game is using a lot of data or RAM or something, or there's a lot more to it than like it would appear. Yeah, I feel like the back-end engine of this game is probably a lot more in-depth than you want to give it credit to, mm-hmm. because... I believe it's using a lot of the similar assets that the actual TV show uses and it may seem very like just like oh it's just construction paper characters it is actually very uh, intensive how much uh, I'd say horsepower well, you'd have to use I don't know I don't well know. think of like if you think of uh, how, how much does like a blu-ray disc hold like how much can go on a blu-ray what maybe a couple episodes I don't know. Mm, it's a couple. It's a. It's fair. Like a lot of gigs. I think I want to say like a hundred gigs. Let's say yeah, a hundred gigs. Okay, so you buy the new season of South Park no, on wrong. Blu-ray. It comes on say what four discs, three discs, and three that's discs. for ten episodes for five hours of the TV show. And this is a twenty-plus hour game on us on one disc. So that's probably the difference. Right. Mm. Blu-ray is 25 gigs per layer, and there's two layers. So 50. Okay, so yeah. 50. So maybe new seasons of shows could be like one series could be on a Blu-ray. Yeah. I don't know. That's Now we're just talking about stuff we literally have no idea on. That's a first for this show. It's not a first. <laughs> uh, controls for this game. South Park, The Fractured Butthole, features 12 superhero classes. Brutalist, Blaster, Speedster, Elementalist, Gadgeteer, Mystic, Cyborg, Psychic, Assassin, Commander, Netherborn, and Karate Kid. Is that 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Cool. Unlike the Stick of Truth, the game allows players to choose their gender of their characters, which will affect how characters react to that player. The Fractured Butthole also features a race customization, which is jokingly labeled difficulty level. The slider doesn't actually affect combat, rather how players talk to you and the amount of money you will receive. So if you become a black person, people are less likely to help you or become friends with you and you receive less money. That's That's a a dark joke. Did you know that? Yeah, I I knew it going in. All right. I saw that and I was like, I'm just going to make my guy like not as white as you can, but like as white as I am, you know, so I'm not like super white, but yeah, that explains why everyone was really nice to me though. I remade my character from uh, Stick of Truth. So, okay. I I think I posted a picture on Twitter of what my guy looked like. I was going for Magneto is what I was going for. So I had a goatee and white hair. Uh, He then had a red coat and a purple cape. And then you change your outfit like five minutes later. My guy was like this weird, I don't know, mystic looking dude. 
Yeah, I bounced around, and you. Uh, there's a couple like through the Ubisoft kind of. I don't know, like Play Store or something. Yep. You can actually download a few different extra costumes. So I downloaded the Iron Man and Assassin's Creed and r- ran around as that for a lot of the game until the end. Interesting. All right. And then I made I made an interesting switch before right. I even knew it was going to happen. So. Nice. Uh, and instead of equipping upgrades in this game, your character selects a costume that represents their identity the best. You can improve your stats by adding artifacts. The combat system was also overhauled, which I think is genius. Uh, Gone is the static JRPG battle system. Instead, it's a a dynamic grid-based system, uh, much like a Final Fantasy Tactics or Valiant Hearts. And that definitely made, like, added to me playing this game, so. Yeah, and it did remind me of XCOM, if you're more familiar with Mm -hmm. a little bit more modern games. Especially because the combat where you can knock, actually, people into each other can be very helpful so interesting yep. very interesting all right now i don't know if this is the best place in the show to do this but w- I, I guess it is i don't know now the, one of the problems is we're not reminiscing as much as we could about this game because we forgot what october 17th 2017 feels like so we're gonna jump in our wayback machine which is our time machine and go back to october 17th 2017 to see is this a good time? Like, do we want to go back to this time of year? I don't know. Maybe, maybe we, I don't know. Is it worth it? Yep. So our favorite show, The Simpsons. The episode that came out around this time was Treehouse of Horror 28. I mean, technically it came out on October 22nd. But if you're going to watch a new episode of The Simpsons, why wouldn't you watch The Treehouse of Horror? Yeah. Right? And it just seems dumb. The three parts of this story were The Exorcist. Homer orders a Pazuzu token that possesses Maggie. Then the second one is Coralisa. Lisa discovers a parallel dimension where her family has buttons for eyes, and it's done in the art style of Coraline. Mm -hmm. And the final one is Mmm Homer, where Homer eats himself. So did you watch the Trios of Horror this year? I did, I did. And was it the best ever? Oh god, I missed the old episodes so badly. I have all I have like twenty one onwards on my one of my Blu-ray players, and I went back and watched it. And there's one on there that's excellent. There's like it's top notch. It's like twenty six or something, and it's one of the best tours of horrors I've ever seen. All the rest, yeah, not great. This yeah. one, the one thing I think they have to get over themselves with is singing or music montages for no reason. South Park, or family, sorry, Family Guy gets away with it because Seth MacFarlane is like a crooner. Him singing is funny because he sings like this around the room. And that is, I don't know, like that's kind of the theme of the, and style of the show. Whereas yeah. Simpsons just randomly will put like music montages. There's one where the guys are, the kids are doing like sins before they go to hell and they just play some like rock song to them like doing little pranks and i'm like that's such a waste of like five, a minute of this show i feel like the simpsons nowadays is just them filling time for 26 minutes or whatever until it's like hey good we're done that's all we need to do wrap this sucker up yeah. and get it like it's it feels so like the, the soul has been sucked out of this and listening to even like lisa's voice in this there was a couple times where you could just easily tell that her voice is just an old woman's voice now. Mm. It's like, oh, this is this is not good. Yeah, you, maybe maybe it's getting to that point where we should just not renew this. Just saying. Does The Simpsons run until one of their actors dies? I think it runs until they basically just aren't hitting their like their ratings anymore. But it's like the and... only thing on Fox that makes money. Like. At this point, I wonder if Simpsons is just running until one of their actors passes away. I won't. I, yeah, that doesn't wouldn't surprise me. Or until like Matt Groening kicks the bucket, and then they're like, yeah. "Sweet, now now we have legal grounds to change everything because all three original creators are dead." Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Keep that. Is Matt keep an eye on that. Yeah. I I don't know. I'm not sure how deceased or not deceased <laughs> Simpsons are. Yeah. So, uh, or so we could watch The Simpsons. Or we could watch our other favorite show, This Is Us. The series follows siblings, Kate, 
Kevin, and Randall as their lives intertwine. Kate and Kevin were originally part of a triplet pregnancy conceived in the bathroom of Froggy's Bar during Super Bowl fourteen. Their due date was October 12th, 1980, but they were born six weeks earlier on August 31st. The biological brother was stillborn. Their parents, Jack and Rebecca, having expected to bring home three babies, decided to adopt another newborn, Randall, a black child born the same day and brought to the same hospital after their biological father abandoned him at a fire station. Now, is that the best premise for a TV show ever? I think so. <laughs> and if you're not sold on it, what about the episode specifically? Still there? The flashback of this episode takes place when the big three are ten years old. Kate and Kevin contract the chicken pox, and the doctor urges Randall to do his best to catch them as well. In present day, Randall takes his daughter and Deja bowling, which leads to a confrontation between him and the father of another young lady who insults Deja. Beth offers to help Deja do her hair, and the two bond, as Beth does so Randall admits to Deja that he has a problem with nervous breakdowns and has taken up running to deal with his anxiety. Oh my god. That's so, the piece of crap I've ever heard. <laughs> so one of the most popular TV shows that I have actually had conversations and people like tell me they cry. <laughs> and it's like the most impassioned, powerful emotional television you can get nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst thing I've ever heard. And I feel so much shame and I, i'm one of those people that i would just be like how to those people it's like do you, do you have a brain left in there in that skull like what's left in there yeah mostly. And if, if there is a brain left <laughs> just start drinking until it's gone because that uh, sounds terrible <laughs> okay oh, so God. simpsons simpsons is our stellar winner this week hooray that's good yeah. all right oh, top tv shows of, all, of tw- October 2017. Game of Thrones, Stranger Things, Twin Peaks, Rick and Morty, South Park, and Samurai Jack. Top movies. So, Jason, it, maybe it's your birthday around October 17th, 2017, and you get one free movie pass. You're like, man, I'm going to go to the movies. What sweet stuff's watching? You could watch Happy Death Day, Blade Runner 2049, Kingsman, The Golden Circle, or... Stephen King's It. Eh? Some good movies in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 can I save my bus, my ticket? <laughs> you sure can, because guess what? Star Wars is coming out soon. Sure yeah. is. That's a thing. Yeah. Top we'll video see. games released. Because apparently I don't do by month, I do by like year on all the old episodes. So let's see what top video games came out in 2017. Mm. We have... Sonic Mania, Cuphead, Metroid, Samus Returns, Marvel vs. Capcom, Infinite, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and Destiny 2. So, a couple of okay games in that list, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially the first you know, three of that, and then the fifth one. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> That's actually pretty, pretty fair. So, yeah, all right. <laughs> I mean, I guess up to this point, too... Uh, Mario Odyssey wasn't released, which I don't know if is a great game, if it's mediocre. I, I def- it definitely is not bad, but like people are saying it's like game of the year, and I'm like, be honest with you, I played it for like three days, and then I bought Breath of the Wild for the Switch because I'm like, man, I could definitely play Breath of the Wild instead of this. So, yeah, and people like something. to always say when things from. Like, when It first came out, oh, best movie ever of all time. It's like, you should really tone back those first reactions and yeah. not just jump to conclusions. So we'll see how it sits in, like, two months' time. It might be one of those things where it gets better with age, like, you know, fine wine, or, or it might be like a lump of bread where it's just moldy and gross and you don't want to look at it, so you throw it out. Wow, what a great analogy. I would, never, thought, I would never have thought of bread getting... Oh, you're right. Old, like, a month old bread would be terrible. Huh. Yep. Yep. Huh. So clearly you've lived on your own before. <laughs> <laughs> and some days you forget that piece of bread on the top of your fridge. All right. So, top three songs from October 17th, 2017. 
probably not our greatest strong suit because you know i don't know if i'm musically inclined but obviously we've heard of these songs because it was you know we, we were alive then the number three song 1-800-273-8255 by logic featuring Alyssa Cara and Khalid. And I actually heard of this song. I fucking hate this song so yep. much it is the most irritating uh like uncreative thing i've ever heard and listening to it when the guy says i don't want to die kind of makes me want it like i'll actually just turn the radio off i makes you want to say please do yeah or like and mm-hmm. i'm like i'm like huh? oh, you, you kind of want to make me die yeah uh, so we song. Just, it just it, like i'm glad that it's it's promoting this uh, like awareness suicide awareness is great that's kind of the top of the show that was where there was a joke and i said hey we're brought to you by this because i think it's great uh that people are bringing awareness to this cause and kids are like into the song and uh, maybe it's going to save some lives <sighs> but just have some talent next time that's all i'm asking you know i mean yeah. i guess i also haven't made millions of dollars off a song so maybe i shouldn't criticize but that's just me Man, the music industry is just made from no talent. So us us sitting around and talking and trying to be funny yeah. for an hour or an hour and a half. I think we have more talent than half the music industry these days. Because most of the time it's just sampled from the 80s or 90s. So it's true. yeah, good, good for you to let other ki- young kids know that the suicide help phone line's a thing. Oh, except for the next two songs are extremely talented. Like the number two song, Boko Yellow. Or Money Moves by Cardi B. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I think I think when this game first came out, I listened to the like whatever the top songs on the Billboard charts were, just because I could hear them ones. I had actually never heard of these ones. Or the number one song. Obviously, we heard it because how cool are we? Rockstar by Post Malone, featuring. I've never heard of that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, are we old? Looking at the, <laughs> look, well, looking at these songs too, I'm like, maybe the Billboard charts isn't the best place to pick like top music from, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I should. I don't know. We think uh, I kind of like it. It's funny. Yeah, we need to keep it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so first memories. Now that we're back in the mindset, we remember what October 17th, 2017 feels like. First memories of this game. I bought this game the day it came out. I went to Walmart that apparently the ATMs didn't work or were out of cash and all the uh, like debit machines were down. So I walked in and they're like, cash only. And I was like, I don't have cash. They're like, well, you can't buy anything today. And I was like, this doesn't sound like Walmart. At-. I'm like, can't you guys give me a credit card? with a balance of like the purchase i'm making like isn't there something you can do for me stupid walmart so instead i, I waited five minutes and i went to best buy and bought it probably a better choice mm-hmm. yeah i went and bought mine at best buy but i remember watching e3 2015 when they first announced it and i was like wow a game i'm actually excited for this never happens at e3 so i was pretty nice. pumped on that Yes, and I was actually sick the first day, two days it came out, so I, I ended up sitting on the couch and playing this, like, two days straight. So on Tuesday, I had most of the game complete, and then Wednesday, I just finally, like, wrapped it up. Um, I actually had, tr- like, quite a bit of trouble putting this down, I think because just, like, the battle, the combat system is very well thought out, you know? So, yeah... I don't know, that as well as I was hoping to trade it in and get as much value as possible so I could get Mario Odyssey, so. Not a bad play. Yeah. I uh, 
I'm going to probably hold on to mine because I really, really, really enjoy my South Park games. And this game's no exception. But I was, in because uh, I pre-ordered that uh, it when it first got announced. Like, I never pre-ordered anything, but I made an exception for South Park because Stick of Truth was just so good. I bought it, and, or I pre-ordered it, and I got the Stick of Truth, so I replayed it. And then I canceled my pre-order, and they just let me keep it. Sweet. So then I opened up the Xbox actual like, case i have an xbox one copy of stick of truth so if somebody is listening to this and actually gets this far and wants a copy send us an email and you can have my copy first person that emails us gets it cool uh now that's for the xbox we should have to come up with a code so you should have to like write like a code in the subject line of the email or like a hashtag so what should be the secret code oh, God. <laughs> bubble gum f- bubble gum fart or how about 1-800-273-8255? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's so the either... best suicide help. Yes. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Awesome. That's great. I love it. So either Bubblegum Farts or the Suicide Prevention Hotline number. And you got yourself a free game. Pretty exciting. Very. Pretty exciting. Uh, now, on to the story of this game. What has become of this city? There used to be laws, justice, not anymore. Crime is out of control, cats are missing, and townspeople are being victimized. Oh, hey, who pooped on my porch? What's going on with you? Whoa, whoa! We were supposed to protect those who couldn't protect themselves. Get off my car, you little pecker! Now superheroes are torn apart by political differences. We are two sides at war. But war isn't going to save our city. Time travel is my only hope now. Myths tell of ancient times. When a new king united a kingdom torn apart by a powerful stick. Hi, hon. Shut up, man. There's no time to waste. I have to go back, change the present if I can, and find this cat. And in doing so, Perhaps I can change what has happened to all of us. I don't know if I'll be able to find sound clips of Cartman explaining the story again. Maybe. So maybe Cartman just explained it. Thanks, Cartman. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you explained it, Cartman. If not, it'll be me doing a cut. Hey, I'm Cartman. <laughs> it's like that's like the worst Cartman impression ever. We're not impressionists. We're comedians. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not an impressionist, guys. Lay off me. Lay off yeah. me. Uh, on to the level notes. This part of the game, spoilers, giant spoilers, asterisks. If you haven't played this uh, and you're looking to pick it up and you're like, oh, what are these guys talking about? We will spoil everything in the game. We kind of go break down uh, the entire walkthrough of the game. And this podcast is meant to be about an hour. You put it on, you go to play a game. And we kind of talk you through, we don't talk you how to play it, but it just gives you maybe a different perspective, tells you kind of what's coming up. Maybe you've already beat it and you kind of want to like replay it or you just like listening to it because you're like, oh, I don't want to play through the whole game, but I like people talking about it and talking about my favorite parts. That's what this part is for. So, Yeah, or if you've played it and you're on a road trip and you don't really want to listen to the terrible Billboard chart songs, apparently. And you just want to listen to a video game broken down and be like, yeah, I totally remember this. This was fun. Yeah, that's kind of what I feel this is uh, our level notes are about. Yeah, so I have about two pages of level notes. The first time I wrote them, there were six pages. So I've edited out four whole pages of data. So hopefully it's a little bit more free-flowing. We start off, we begin as the new kid at the tail end of the epic battle from The Stick of Truth. However... Cartman turns gears and declares everyone is playing superheroes now in an effort to save the city's cats and to earn $100. Day one, Sunday. We select our character class. We either are a bruiser, a speedster, a pyromancer. The rest of the day is filled with various character development, game mechanic introductions, so whether it's battling, crafting, or artifacts, uh, character introductions, and I actually, yeah, so that's kind of the, the first, I would say, day. Anything stand out to you for the, from the first day? Uh, nothing really. I mean, you, there's clearly a 
lot it just feel like the so it feels like something's going on all the cats are missing and there's even people like wandering around looking for cats and uh yeah so I, I was depth to the world yeah yeah and they're setting up what's kind of coming for the next few days and you talk to like uh like randy who's buffing out some key scratches in his car which will come into play later and he actually asks he's like yeah if you uh figure out who's doing this we can take a selfie because that's what that's what you do to everybody that you meet is you you take a selfie yeah you're trying to get them on coonstagram yeah yeah uh the one thing i found is trying to go into cartman's base the first time there's a door pad and has a bunch of like little numbers like coon awesome fuck uh mario jake you or something like just random words and cartman's mom comes and says oh cartman told me or put a keypad on the door because he said i wasn't allowed to go and i was like obviously it's fuck you mom so i typed that into the keypad and then cartman appeared dressed up as bill belichick being like don't be a tom brady don't cheat you have to find this out the legit way and i was like oh that's the key though and i punched in a couple more times and the game actually wants you to go look at the little journal in his room yeah. to learn the code before you can press it in so you can't just fall. i'm like huh interesting also some of the most graphic child child pornography i've ever seen in a video game <laughs> uh yeah like I, butters butters is just flow full out blowing kyle in like a drawn cartoon picture but i guess because it's in cartoon it's fine yeah yeah Cartman's notebook is a little bit messed up a little bit a lot messed up for sure yeah. Uh, after we've kind of completed everything for the day, we'll go to our first boss fight, and we go into Civil War. We head to Main Street, and we fight the Freedom Pals, which is the main enemy of the Coonan friends. The bosses here are Tupperware, which is Token, Wonder Tweak, Professor Timothy, and Mysterion. I don't think remember them being that tough. No, but I remember that professor timothy was really irritating and i had that feeling almost throughout this entire game and i like timmy timmy's one of my favorite characters so i don't know why i was so like i freaking hate him yeah drives me crazy i don't know why that's fair so that's the end of day one we're on to night one we must sneak out of our house and find uh information on an informant of south park's underbelly of crime so we go to the strip club with our friend captain diabetes do you remember the peppermint hippo from the show not off the top of my head is this where because bucket of figaccini is right beside it the italian restaurant is this where the cock nobbler is is that where like oh, he tries to lose this, his virginity this is where they take chef when he's brainwashed oh okay the peppermint hippo okay so it has appeared before yeah yeah it has okay uh, so we break inside, uh, we have to mix the DJ a drink, call out Classy, who's the girl with the penis tattoo, uh, and she flees because she thinks you're the police. And this is probably my f- one of my favorite parts of the game, is the boss fight against Classy. So what we're trying to do is it's a grid-based battle, and it's the length of the stripper's dressing room, and you have to chase Classy. If she gets too far away, she'll escape. So you have to really work on... Uh, in battle you're allowed to move a certain number of steps attack or use an item so you have to continually chase as well as knock out the other girls uh, to be- keep up with her which i thought was very interesting yeah and you can just skip your attack phase so i found myself just kind of just skipping attacks just trying to move as fast as i can to the other side of the room because you will get squished yeah yeah because as, as soon as you get to a certain point this big fat booty chick comes into the room uh, and actually will do it as an area effect which if you she hits you you die i definitely died here once because i got squished and i thought this was a bad use of not having the cock nobbler come in here or whatever her name whatever uh jimmy's girlfriend was yeah there's a couple like actual characters that i'm surprised didn't pop up in this but then there's the the one uh, girl from Little Crime Stoppers that is wandering around asking everybody for a dance, and you, she actually like uh, she actually does something in this game instead of just wandering around. <laughs> so is that was a lot of dance? Daytime, daytime strippers, you know, daytime yeah. strippers. And so, the DJ is uh, 
announcing the entire entire uh, battle, which is hilarious. Uh, yeah, so assuming you win this battle, just don't get squished. Get to the far side of the room. Uh, you escape into the Italian restaurant. Uh, you kill the guy. Uh, Captain Diabetes goes into a diabetic shock. So you use your fart to reverse time. So look at that. The butthole of time. Fascinating. Uh, we get into the Italian restaurant. You fight some Italian cooks that aren't super interesting by any means. Uh, we find out the uh, an Italian family playing poker with Classy until drunken Randy breaks in wanting his keys back. Oh, I guess we took Randy's keys at some point. <laughs> yeah. Well, we walk by his house and we see that he's actually keying Sharon's car. <laughs> yes. And then every day he spends buffing the key marks out. So it's this weird, vicious cycle he's in. But he's not an alcoholic. He just likes to have a couple drinks once in a while. Yeah, and he's red wine drunk, Randy, so that's the worst kind of drunk, so all the Titans take off. Yeah, basically, if he kills Scott, he gets his keys back. We failed. Just take out Randy. I, I just think I just kept Scott as far away from him as possible and used lots of area or, like, range attacks, and I was okay. Yep. Uh, D2, Monday. We spend the day following up with our lead from Classy while trying to get more information on the stolen cats. We commit some hate crimes, get another class for our characters, learn some environmental farts, and partner abilities. The end of uh, anything of happen on day two that's noteworthy in your mind. Nothing that really jumps out, to be honest. The problem with this game is there's so many little things. So, uh, like the Randy scene. We're only going to talk about the ones that we... Like, we just picked a couple rather than talking about all the funny moments of this game. If you haven't played this game and you like South Park or you like RPGs or you like video games, play this game. It's extremely funny. Yeah, it's basically like what you're playing a, playing a season of the show. Like, even the little, like, back and forth or even when, like, you'll be midway through a battle and then all of a sudden you hear, like, a car horn honk and then everybody pauses and walks off the street. And then, like you hear them, like get off the street, you damn kids! This is this is an amazing show or game. Yeah. So I mean, we're not gonna <coughs> talk in nausea about everything that happens. I was just trying to summarize everything really well. But if you're like, oh, I remember that. Let's talk about that for a little bit. That's just kind of I think how this is gonna work. Yep. Uh, where are we? Uh, so then, at the end of the day, we get to Civil War Two. Play times over. Toolshed calls us to the park to thank us for stopping Randy from drunk driving. A positive message in a South Park game? Weird. But we have to battle the Freedom Pals again. We This time we fight Mysterion, Toolshed, Wonder Tweak, and Tupperware. So just uh, Professor Timothy was moved for Toolshed. Uh, this boss, boss fight kind of highlights the upcoming characters we get to use in the second half of the game. And we're off to Night 2. We team up with Toolshed and make our way to the U store, uh, the U store through Kenny's house. Uh, I found that once we got to the U hall or the U store, sorry, it was a very like Joker's Madhouse kind of theme from Arkham Asylum type thing. Is that kind of the vibe you got? Um, yeah, and it's funny that uh, Butters has actually got a loan for like twenty thousand dollars somehow. And he's actually hired a bunch of uh, uh, illegal immigrants, yeah, yeah. Illegal immigrants. <laughs> to help him out, which I is hilarious. I think somebody, the big boss man, paid him twenty grand to cover the town in uh, Lego red Legos, which is lava. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, like I think they're saying like, oh, this guy paid me, and like he's bad. So, uh, we'll talk about that a bit more at the ending. So this guy has twenty grand to throw around. <sighs> Where does he get the money from? I'm not sure. But mm. other thing, the the my favorite part of this night is when uh, Professor Chaos releases all his evil minions to take you over, and they're just all the hamsters in the wheels, and then they just run around just being hamsters in a, in like a ball, and you're like, just walk, just walk past them, you're like <laughs> that. That was amazing because he built it up to be like this ultimate destruction of you guys and it's gonna for sure take you down it's like oh wait they're literally just hamsters we're just gonna walk around these things yeah, it's pretty funny pretty mm. funny indeed uh as we kind of make our way through the u store uh, there's other minions we do have to destroy a meth lab 
We fight General Disarray. He drops lava onto the team. So again, kind of one of those environmental aspects. Uh, it'll show where the lava is going to land. Make sure you're not there or you take burn damage. Mm -hmm. We go on to the roof fight, and we actually get to fight Professor Chaos in a mech suit. You slowly have to disassemble the suit while taking out his support team. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's a nice multi-layered uh, battle, uh, battle, so I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. uh, Ooh, and that... you get, uh, I believe Wendy actually joins your party at this point, who's pretty OP. Yeah, she has a run-in. You have a run-in with some of the uh, Raisins girls before this. Yeah. And I think she comes and joins your team. Yeah, I definitely I enjoyed I thought Wendy was one of the better characters. Her... Yeah. What was my... I don't think I wrote down my final team. But yeah, which characters did you end up using? I'm pretty sure I used the Human Kite. Which... Yeah, whew, yeah Human Kite. That is one of the best... Yeah. references nicknames in a in a in a south park game let's put it that way it's it's excellent yeah so yeah i used him and super craig uh super craig i think i think i lost super craig i had someone sh oh no i had mysterion i think my final team was mysterion kite and uh call girl mm -hmm. that's, good. that's a good line i definitely yeah. um i was using mysterion because mysterion's really powerful but when he dies, he becomes that ghost, and he's not really helpful in yeah. boss battles, so he can kind of yeah. screw you over. Yeah, I definitely, I, I think I rethought it a little bit. And plus his shadow kick that I really liked, my guy just, I gave that to my character, and then he was really unnecessary, so. Nice. I don't, I don't know if I should write down, wrote down my team. Anyways. Oh, I think I do have Super Craig, because I really liked his Yowie ability. Yeah, yeah. Him and Tweak. Yeah. Uh, on day three which is Tuesday, uh, this day sees us invade the, or invade the Freedom Fighters, so we go undercover. We have to fight some seniors. We, we get threatened by Mitch Connor. And there is also some character building. I think this is the, at the point where you unlock uh, Tweaking Craig's super special Yowie ability. Yeah. So definitely worth it. You have to do a little side quest where you have to help them go through counseling. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, when I was doing the battle for that, it actually glitched out because I, their super ability didn't take out every single person. It left one person alive, so it just kind of glitched out. So I had to like replay it twice to like figure out why it was glitching out. And I was like, "Oh, I got to kill this guy." So like, I moved my character to kill like the one person on the bottom row, and it left everybody in the top four, or three, or four sections. And then gotcha. the super ability killed everybody, and then the game continued. But it's like that's weird. That's a weird glitch. But there's a couple in this game. It's very nice, nice. Uh, so. Then we where are we? Uh, the rest of the day, we we find out that the police are involved in the kidnapping, or sorry, the catnapping, uh, and we have been rounding up black people for some reason. Since we are such a good trader, the coon unlocks another class for our character. So pretty exciting we didn't really talk about our characters specifically did we uh what no. character did you have do you remember off the top of your head which uh three abilities you chose yeah i was started with the bruiser and then i picked the elementalist and then i picked cyborg for my third one i think okay. yeah and we got a fourth one at some point don't we yeah yeah well we get all of them at some point Okay, so I definitely went pyromancer, uh, pyromancer, and environmental or uh, elementalist as well, and then the cyborg. Mm. And I think the last one I did was when Professor Timothy unlocks it. I did the like shadow kick one, the martial artist, I guess. Right. Yeah, I definitely mixed that in. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so we're on to night two. That's right. Yeah, night two. The thin white line we go to the police station where the coon and friends and freedom pals meet up we have to fight a bunch of police officers which is way easier than i was expecting these guys had riot, riot sh er, shields and guns we took them out fairly simply and i was like oh that's weird <laughs> yeah uh, well they're all we, high on coke and shit <laughs> yeah that's true uh there's some puzzle solving and we get to fight some more police and release the black people who are being framed for and wrongfully imprisoned uh there's some more battling oh and before we go into the basement jared 
is like the only white person in prison and he comes out and he wants to he at one point will brutally put his foot long in the boys mouths and like ram it in repeatedly and then squirt mayonnaise on their face and uh <sighs> like oh well then huh. good for south park for getting away for that because that's the thing i just saw <laughs> they're not letting that one go slip by yeah yeah i was like oh geez that's great uh as we make our way into the morgue and kind of bottom part of the this like weird uh mystical aspect of the game kind of takes over and it stops being just this like you chasing the police to something evil is actually going on there's skulls all over the ground and like guys in hoods and stuff like that yeah and we find out that the police have actually been worshiping an elder god shub uh niggeroth uh, and feeding black people to him to appease him he doesn't like white meat he only likes dark meat so yes. that's a thing that's a thing indeed yikes yeah but a pretty fun battle all in all basically you just have to knock them into the the police into the pit and then it'll like scoop down and kill anything in the red zone so another one we have to kind of be really aware of or have a good group, I should say, of with a lot of characters with knockback. So, yeah, pretty fun because he has like nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine health, and every mm-hmm. police that he eats takes out three thousand health. So it's not that impossible. So really, it's only he eats three police and he's dead. So yeah. Uh, afterwards, we are uh, revealed to be the traitor, and we have to fight the Freedom Pals. Professor Timothy uses his mind control to control our allies. Once we knock out an ally, they rejoin us, and eventually, it's like a usually like a one-on-one. Like one person will come in, Professor Timothy will take him over, and then we fight them. I found that the tide of battle switched pretty quickly for the most part. Me too. Uh, and we were able to finally take out Professor Timothy. We find out that Professor Timothy's secret project this whole time was how to turn the Freedom Pals and Coon and Friends franchises so that everyone can have solo movies and Netflix series. So Yeah, it's the uh, ultimate, it's mathematically even, so. There you go, so no one is being favored, so yay Professor Timothy. And then there's this big thing where I, I actually knew Cartman was going to betray us as soon as he was like, yeah, I love this. Freedom Pals is a great idea. I was like, oh, Cartman's definitely the bad guy in this game. <laughs> yeah, as soon as, as soon as I saw Mitch Connor, I was like, oh, we're going this route. It's like, we should just yeah. lock up Cartman right now. Yeah. Uh, we're on to day four. The final day? The final, well, yeah. sort of, kind of. The final, yeah, the final day. Freedom Calling. The next morning, back at Freedom Pals HQ, Professor Timothy unlocks all the classes and we can finally customize our character. I had a fire punch with knockback, a plant attack that had major knockback with bleeding, a dragon kick, and the cyborg special ability. What did your final character look like? I was rocking the cyborg special, um, the uh, like shadow kick from the karate guy, the brutalist uh, main punch. And then I think I was using the assassins like diagonal attacks, okay, or the the T attack, just so I could kind of get a lot more. uh, Because I was always worried about like how much range I could hit. I didn't want to just hit in front of me because if there's someone up above you or to the left, like any diagonal, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, that's true. That's um. So I used that, and then I switched out the the cyborgs like major gun attack or the uh, ultimate attack for the elementalist uh queef attack <laughs> for mother oh, nice. nature uh heals everybody so nice that that one i find can be really helpful especially in uh boss battles nice that's good excellent um at some point we have to help <laughs> wendy take out the crab people that work at the d mobile store it's kind of like a a thing <laughs> yeah well, we'll call thing. girls phone stop working yes because her plan went off of it now the one thing i will say about this game is uh sometimes when you go into a store you if I find you didn't have a lot of cash and lots of the time i wasn't just selling off equipment i was trying to craft things but you would get uh i'd have like 30 dollars and there'd be a gin and tonic like in the peppermint hippo uh, and then the game says it's like a quest item so i bought it Two seconds later, I check a table and there's a gin and tonic sitting on the table. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? Like, why did I waste my money on that quest item? 
and there's a phone plan at some point that I think I bought. Oh no, you need the phone plan in the D Mobile store so the manager will be your friend, right? Yeah, but the price drops on the four or the final day. They give you a discount uh, after you kind of save them from the crab people. Because I, I put it off buying it. Because same with that in the raisins passes. I was like, I'm not spending like all my money on these stupid things. And then on the final day, they're like five dollars. And you're like, oh well, that's a lot more reasonable. Gotcha. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. I wish yeah. I would have thought of that. Oh, oh well. Yeah, and also once you unlock, like I spend all day three like switching all my classes and going through all that crap because you have to like go talk to Cartman and switch everything out and running to like the raisins and then getting the pictures of all the the patrons there I could have just waited until Timothy unlocked all my all my bloody stuff yep so yep screw me yeah screw you uh then we're off to to catch a coon we have to chase Mitch Connor around South Park First, we have to go to Tweak's Coffee House. He gives us some clue about something about if you wanted to stay awake or something and like a warm liquid. And I was like, oh, the coffee shop. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we go inside and we end up talking to a guy in a red shirt to get the next clue, which is something about where the dead would go or something. We or go if you want to die, you would go there or something. Yeah, something. Yeah, like, uh, and I was like, oh, the morgue. So I started heading towards the morgue outside though we get into a fight that involves a crab person a sixth grader a ninja a raisins girl a chaos kid and a red knock who because we're all public enemy number one because we're doing such good deeds for the city they've all teamed together to take us out i actually i don't know if i died but i definitely had a hard time with this battle i had another glitch here where i killed everybody and i think the raisin girl was left and then i killed her and the battle didn't end so i saved uh mr kim for last and then the battle actually ended so i don't know if that's okay. like a thing but yeah i don't know I, I i know that my kryptonite was the raisins girls so mm. i made a point of not attacking them or like not getting into as many fights because i was like a bit more i don't know like afraid of them or something yeah i think the correct answer is vampires because i did not find any vampires in this game so if you're playing this game and they ask you about your kryptonite pick vampires because i don't think there are vampires in this game unless there's dlc which might come i suppose but i mean i don't know if you can change it at that point anyways yeah i choose crab people (laughs) yeah okay fair enough did you find the fight with the crab people hard uh, it was a little bit harder. It was harder compared because I was really uh, overpowered at this point because I really made uh, an effort to go get all the best artifacts and yeah, fair enough. Really, okay. At this point, I didn't need any extra extra experience because I basically had all the artifacts and slots. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and then from there, uh, the fast pass. Uh, so Timmy is the Flash, and he runs really quickly. And Jimmy. I understood how everything else, sorry, Jimmy, uh, and everything else was kind of like imagination. But I was always con- con- confused. How did Jimmy run so fast? I don't think he did. Okay, all right. So it was just imagination. We have to use our imagination. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, basically. All right. So we have to then walk to uh, the hint is death comes in all sizes. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I tried to go to the police station. Uh, you can't get in and I tried to go down to like the morgue because like everyone kind of mm. dies and looks different but that's not it you have to go to Jimbo's gun store I see I went to all the restaurants first being like yeah. ah death from fast food all right so oh, I'm glad that we didn't use a guide and kind of like tried to figure those out and obviously we're wrong it's not a really big city and it's somewhat like manageable to walk around so yeah, and then it's fine. the next the next hint was something about a playground, <laughs> something about like yeah, it's like a jungle gym or something. So I was like, okay, yeah. so I went to the playground. Then once we're there, we find out that our Wendy tracks down Cartman's location to the rec center. Now uh, this is about the time too where I went and talked to Seaman at the South Park Pond, who had a special mission for us. We have to talk to the gay fish whose mom can't get to heaven so we have to play a flappy bird mini game and i thought this play this part was really funny yeah it was the, the gay fish is hilarious so it basically is a ripoff of kanye although i could have swore i saw kanye in some of like the promotional 
uh, material for this game. So the fact that he was just an actual gay fish was interesting. I've heard there's also a bit of a eh, like a point being raised because the gay fish's mom definitely has blackface on. Does she? Yeah. Like, I don't even remember just, that. It's just it's like a black fish with like big red lips, but mm. that's kind of what blackface was for lack of a better term. So I was like, oh okay. But you have to play Flappy Bird. So you have a couple hearts and your unicorn that you're riding on farts rainbows and you have to go up and down. The best part about this is when you fail, you start off with three hearts. It gives you eight hearts. <laughs> and then the third time you fail, you get hearts all the way across the screen. And I was like, that's actually kind of funny. And I intentionally failed to see if they would just keep giving you more and more stuff. So well done, game. Well done. Yeah, very good. Uh, from here, some of the what are the, some of the summons in this game too? So we have Jimbo. The Jimbo, yeah. If we do, uh, how do you get Jimbo on your team? Uh, you have to return his wallet after he gets drunk at the uh, hippo on hippo. day two. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, then if you get molested by the police or the priest in the back room when you're trying to discover your religion, you get the macaroni picture of Moses. Yep. Which you can recraft, so that's pretty cool. There's the piss vials, uh, so you can call in uh, Mr. Broflosky. Uh, Kyle's dad, he'll come in and like do the full metal jacket airplane and drop bombs everywhere. I think I used that one a lot towards the end of the game for sure. So Yeah, I just started really spamming all my stuff because Moses heals you and then Jimbo and Ned come in and just do like area, area damage. Yeah. But there are and, a limited uh, number of summons in this game. So the last game you could use them once per day. This one, like, there's only five CB radios. So if you use them all, that's it. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. I kept about two in the bank in case there's DLC. But Smart. I mean, the other thing is you can, uh, you can always make more macaroni pictures. So that's the one that you can kind of spam. So Moses was the one you could kind of use freely without much consequence. Which makes sense because it's the heal one. And then we got classy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right, classy. Now, this is the part of the game where we go to the rec center to fight the coon and Mitch Connor. And this part is kind of where the, I don't know, we'll talk about it, and then we'll talk about it. Okay? Yeah. Uh, this guy's, so these guys will cheat, and they actually get two turns per battle. So the battle is much more difficult than it needs to be. And it kind of goes on and on. And even when they're both defeated, they're like, oh, no, just kidding, I have full health. And you're like, oh, that's not fair. Oh, so and that did ice damage. Yeah. So it, it's kind of fun because it cheats with the battle mechanics. And it's funny that everyone in town has just agreed upon these are the ways we fight. It's kind of like the pink ball episodes of Community where everyone just agrees to be like extremely honest and go along with whatever theme and motif everyone is going for. So I mm -hmm. like when ever, I like when communities and shows just or like everyone just goes for like one theme. It's kind of, I don't know, kind of interesting. Everybody goes with it. Yeah, totally. Uh, so we interrogate the coon until he tells us about the genetically altered cats and we get to eat disgusting items and then fart in his face and then at one point he farts on a cuttlefish and you or pukes on a cuttlefish and then you eat it and you're like ew also i don't know what a cuttlefish is but i hate it uh, just saying sounds gross uh we're off to the only person in town that has a bunch of genetically altered cats the many asses of dr mephesto we have to wait until 10 p.m. before we can go on the tour. So we learn about the time travel fart. In the lab, uh, things go bad, obviously. Because I think the whole time he's like, oh, this happens in this floor. But don't worry, there's lots of security. Oh, don't worry, there's lots of security. And I was like, Ugh, we have to go through like six floors to get out of here on the way out. And here's all the things you have to fight. And I'm like... Eh, and thanks, my favorite is is craig and being he's like why would you do that it's like oh you're just one of those cynics eh? it's like no this why would you do this for like what scientific what benefit does this have for science oh you just don't understand it's like i do i do like when he's like oh my son i've grown a bunch of my genetically versions of my son because my son was once killed when barbara streisand attacked the city and they're like oh yeah i think we did that <laughs> like oh was that us i think that was us lots of people forgot that i had a son and i was like i sure did <laughs> i sure did mm -hmm. uh, obviously things go awry and we have to fight our way out by fighting cats sixth graders and we have to kill our parents which is definitely a dark part of this game yeah definitely 
So you see I, this is the first time actually I actually looked at the guide and was like, okay, is there a right choice here? Like, what happens here? So. Mm-hmm. I think I killed my mom. No, my dad. I think yeah, I, I definitely killed house. my dad too because he was being a yeah. dick. Yeah, so your parents are getting like aggressively. Your mom has a drinking problem and your dad is getting high. But he also has game. a drinking problem because yeah. a couple of the nights you'd go downstairs and you'd like have to escape your house and he'd be like passed out on the couch and there'd be like... 12 bottles of beer and like a bunch of weed and bongs and shit on the table and you're like i feel like you're the worst one she just gets drunk on wine and goes to bed you're the one that's like trashing the house every night yeah yeah so something was going on with your parents throughout the whole game uh you really don't find out anything more at this point you just know that they've been captured and you have to kill one of them to open a door so Mm -hmm. (sighs) that's fun (laughs) i was like jesus as we're about to leave though uh, we get to fight one of Dr. Mephesto's, or I guess Mitch Connor's, genetically altered monsters. Genetically altered Kyle, too. He is huge and quite tough. You have to last until you find that the prompt turns the night to day and day to night to deal a lot of damage. So, I, I kept expecting, like, oh, this is the final boss. Look how big he is. And you have to, like, change days and nights and stuff like that. And I was like, oh. But we're getting to the end of the game, so that's okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kyle 2's involvement, did it do anything for you? Funny? Uh, Good callback? Yeah, it was funny. And I, I like how, like, earlier in the, the game when he's allowed to play with us, he would, like, show up, the battle would stop, and he'd be like, time to do the ultimate summon or something. And then he would just, like, fall on his face and break his nose and, like, run off the screen. And you're like, that's funny. There was That's a lot funny. of foreshadowing for him being one of like the final bosses. So, I mean, I guess, because you fight him right early on in the game, and instead of killing you, he jumps off the bed and breaks his neck and like <laughs> has a bloody nose and has to run away. So, yeah. It's kind of funny. And then yes. later on, you have to uh, fight him and Mrs. Br- Brofloski because you're making fun of him or something like that. Yeah, and then Kyle joins in because it's like, dude, you're attacking my mom. What the fuck, man? Yeah. So it is kind of foreshadowed. Uh, again, you can survive it just depending what your party looks like. Like Call Girl is great. You put her in a corner. She never does damage and can do lots of damage to him. Uh, as soon as the night comes up, uh, just make sure you're doing lots of healing items. This is where Moses definitely comes in handy. Yeah. As well as if you have like Kyle on your team, uh, he can do his healing effects and you should be you know, have no problem. Yeah, I, I'm the elemental ultimate because you get like i had like three or four like ultimates in this battle and just having that heal everybody like almost full health really helped a lot and just like allowed me to just basically just conserve all my big uh heals instead of having to burn through them all awesome then we're on to farts of future past yeah so Mm -hmm. this is where my um costume I mentioned earlier on, actually, oh, yeah. like I didn't realize, but I made an ironic decision. I made basically my character look like, uh, like I had like a Batman mask, so he had like a black thing and pointed pointed ears. Oh yeah, and he had a like the one of the like he had like a black shirt and all like the the like uh, it was like it was basically like tactical vest, but it had like just all the pockets, and I looked exactly like Wolverine from basically Days of Future Past. And then this happened, and I was like, oh, I'm so happy with myself. I actually made my character look like Wolverine when he goes back in time. That's neat. Yeah. Fun. My guy, pretty much, I think I found the weird Christian suit with, like, the hat, the Arkine hat. At the very beginning, I beat up a snowman and found the hat, and I just wore a hat with a big eyeball on it the whole game. Oh, nice. I don't know. I was like, supposed to be, like, some weird little mystic. Basically, I just wanted to be play as Magneto, but they didn't have... You couldn't play as Magneto, so... That's fair. But I'm excited to play this game again because I feel like there's lots of character choices and costume ideas, and you can be very creative, so... Yeah, and I'm excited for the uh, girlfriend to play around with this because she was really excited that she could play as a girl. Yeah, that's fair. And at some point, you you go and actually talk to Mr. Mackey about your gender, and you can say, I'm a girl, and I'm a gay girl or something. Yeah. All those results will result in rednecks coming and beating you up based on your choices because they don't like you. But you could be like, I'm a straight man. And they're like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. 
doesn't matter what it, what you choose. They basically show up and they're like, <laughs> and at the one point he's like, why are you talking like this? It's like a uh, dialogue tree. Yeah. There. Uh, so we learn from Morgan Freeman teaches us how to use our time travel farts. But unfortunately we go into the future. Uh, I guess at this point we can explain that the plot of the story is Mitch Connor wants to use our social media presence. That's why he had us go around and talk to all the people before we fought him in the rec center so that he'd become more popular on social media so that he could become the mayor of South Park and make every day Christmas. Mm -hmm. Because then you would get lots of presents. So that's pretty much the story of this game. As well as he kind of believes, I guess, in anarchy. Is that a good summary? Yes. And all the adults have a massive drinking problem. So... Oh, yeah, that's right. And crime is They apparently, so like... Uh, Christmas is the worst day in, in South Park. Uh, none of that, but they're adding something to the drugs and alcohol to make people more violent when yes. they're drinking and using it because they wanted to increase the crime rates to get the mayors fired. So that's why the cats were being taken so that they could create more, uh, whatever it was called, cheesing. So anyone that drinks the cat piss or sprays the cat piss in their face uh, will become more violent as a result of it as opposed to being more mellow. So that's kind of as part of the escalation throughout the game. You see more drunk people in the streets, more people violently attacking, acting more aggressive towards you. Uh, and it's all kind of that like build up throughout the game. Yes. Makes sense? Makes sense. Unfortunately, we go too we go too far into the future and we find out that Mitch Connor has been made mayor and the city is always Christmas. For no reason whatsoever, we fight the Christmas critters with help from Santa. So the Christmas critters are a story that only exists in Cartman's imagination, and we saw them in Imagination Land. But in this game, they're real, and we fight them for some reason. So I don't really understand how that works. Yeah, neither do I. Hmm. But apparently, hmm. they make something like, "Oh, we we're waiting for you." And you're like, uh, "What? How does Mitch yeah. Connor know all this stuff?" Yeah, that's kind of where I was at. Uh, I did read in my strategy that this was the toughest fight in the game. I used Santa on one end to, uh, and then my plant knockbacks to just keep the Christmas critters on either end of the screen and used lots of range attacks to take them out. They were no problem. So I'm not mm. sure why my the strategy guide said that. Yeah, I've also heard that the toughest battle in this game is uh, Morgan Freeman. We have to fight Morgan Freeman? You can fight Morgan Freeman. When? If you go behind his uh, taco, uh, if you go into his taco hut and then you go behind the bar, like the little stool opens, and if you punch him, he'll actually be like, stop that. And then just be like, You'll, you two can fight. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we can't jump back in time because we have a fractured butthole. So we have to go to the abortion clinic, have a doctor fix our butthole. Uh, somehow we're like told something like, use your power as well. And you're like, oh, yeah. We use our fixed fractured butthole and travel back to the start of the game. From here, we have to battle all of our characters from the first game. This was a great nostalgic callback fight. I thought it was definitely interesting for the most part. How'd you like it? I enjoyed it a lot. Unlike Stick of Truth, where I feel like it ended without a lot of boss battles, I feel like we're getting like kyle 2 then christmas critters now we're fighting ourselves and now it's like now we're gonna fight like and before that we fought cartman while he's cheating it's like we're getting a lot of like big important battles that are tough so i feel like they're ramping up the difficulty so i like it you like today eh? all right well maybe we can talk about that uh where are we we then travel back to our origin story and find out that our parents have crazy social media powers, and so do we. So our mom once joined Facebook, and she had over a million followers overnight. Our dad was on Twitter, and he had a million followers overnight. The government took them to experiment on them to learn how are they so good at social media. They met, fell in love, had us, and escaped. And that's why they've been on the run and they don't want us to keep they want us to keep a low profile because now we can have as many Twitter, Instagram, Facebook followers than anyone in the world. And that's our special 
origin story. Yep. Oh, and then to suppress it, our parents have been feeding us drugs, which give us crazy gas power. So that's why we have super fart powers, is from the drugs. Hmm. Makes sense. Sort of, I guess. I guess. And wait, did our dad fuck our mom in this one? Isn't that no, how- but our, our parents are finally not fighting because they're happy being just open and honest. They feel like the future will be a lot brighter now. Yeah, uh... The, something with a crazy uh so then oh so then we and can, the three muggers that you fight in every one of your origin story are there but they're just there because they want to be your friend because you have like a million followers and they just want to be your friend because they don't have any right. friends that's right that's right so you can uh, take a selfie with them all so now that we understand where our powers come from we use our butt whole time travel powers to go to when cartman right before he's sworn in as mayor and we disclose his evil plan to everyone in the city everyone in the city (laughs) he then explains that his mom or his dad fucked his mom and he saw it which caused him to be so evil and try and take things out on everyone and then everyone agrees to go and get their drugs and alcohol from a different city and that's how the story ends yep yep so oh we did miss the one fight where we have to fight uh, the, the two, two midges. midges. Yeah. yeah. So as we run into Cartman, Cartman says, Oh no, guys, I'm good. Mitch isn't here. And Kyle's like, Yeah, because Mitch is on my hand. Hey, everybody. It, and then Cartman also, it, it's kind of, I don't know, confusing, complicated. Yeah. But, I, yeah, it's good though. Yeah. So uh, that's the end of the game. Uh, current thoughts. I really enjoyed the battle system in this game. Uh, it made every encounter a little different and added a lot to, of replayability to this title. I'm excited once the price goes down and it's, you know, $20, $25, $40. Pick up this game again, play through it once more. But I found that... Hmm, actually, uh, and I guess, sorry, the humor was excellent. Much like the TV show, the underlining uh, brilliant jokes and satirical comments are overshadowed by gross-out humor. So, I mean, you're dealing with these things where... <sighs> being black makes just people react differently to which is a striking social commentary but then you also have to like fart in someone's face and then ha- eat puked on broccoli to fart in them again kind of thing i don't know it's it's south park yeah i mean if you guys are really like your fart and poop jokes but um i, I think it is what it is right like it's not yeah yeah is what it is yeah. is all i yeah. can say I, I enjoy South Park and I, I like their humor and I get that a lot of it's kind of just to be like, oh, does this upset you? Does this upset you? Does this under get on your skin? So it doesn't for me. That's why I think it's funny because there's people out there that are like, oh, well, that's offensive. And you're like, yeah, that's the whole point it's for yeah. people like you to get upset. So, yeah, yeah, very true. Very true. Uh, is there anything in the game? So just before we kind of, I guess that's the end, we move on. Uh, is there anything that i don't know like stands out for some reason that you kind of want to just discuss quickly no canada in this game no canada there's no canada well there's the wall and there's a bunch of cool stuff over there buddy maybe in dlc is that really what they say yeah i don't think i actually ever explored over to that farm that's funny (laughs) you never went to uh to canada no oh okay i did oh yeah i guess because there's a big 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 wall yeah, uh, and so there's the one guy being like, I uh, can't go down this road. That's great. That's really great. Uh, so we talked about the game ending. Did you watch the new season of South Park? And have you seen the kind of the prequel to this game? Yeah, where they all break up. I have. Okay, good. And how do you like my style? Yeah. Yes, with uh, freaking Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to block you. How do you like my style? Yeah. I really liked him for some reason in that episode so his like poorly dubbed martial artist thing that he was doing i didn't get it but i liked it yeah me too i thought it was uh i thought it was very well done like i think if you're gonna go down that road they did it right because uh yeah facebook is kind of a joke so I'm well, totally uh, fine with them. Apparently, they did like a Facebook VR presentation that went horribly that week. 
uh, at one point like it wasn't working and then at one point they went to Guatemala where there was like this big earthquake and they're walking around and there's like people suffering and bleeding on the street uh, and like no one's helping them and they're like look how cool this is it's like you're here <laughs> and they're like why would you pick this place to go to so apparently that was part of the commentary uh, and then when they asked about it he's like oh it's fine it'll work when you guys use it it just didn't work this was just a technical demonstration so he's apparently so good at blocking and like not taking criticism like that was part of the joke oh gotcha gotcha yeah this new episode of like, Park, like the witch hunt one which is all about uh harvey weinstein and stuff like that and how he sexually abused women did you know that i did not yep uh, there's a podcast uh respect my authority listen to it it gives you definitely a deeper understanding of south park episodes you're like jesus christ like good job guys good yeah, job way to break it down yeah so if you guys are watching the new ones you want a bit more commentary you want to listen to some guys like overthink a couple things check out that podcast if you want to listen mm-hmm. to guys just ramble about nonsense check us out you know thanks for staying cool. with us for an hour and a half it's what we do best good t- ramble good times yeah, anything you would change with this game so i would eliminate some of the boss fights towards the end of the game uh, i found with Mitch and the Coon, Genetic Altered Kyle, followed by ourselves, followed by the two Mitches. It was kind of anticlimactic, and I think, like you said, it was nice to have boss fights, boss fights that were difficult, but there was no almost no climax to the game. Like the part where they're sitting around the town square was very anticlimactic. You know, I say get rid of Mitch Connor. That's my biggest. That's what I would change. I freaking hate him as a character, and I don't think he's funny. Like. Everybody yeah. knows his bit by now. At this point in the world of South Park, it's like, why is Mitch, Mitch Connor still a thing? Why is this working? Like, seriously, everybody? And they're all like, they also stand there, like, all shocked. And you're like, gang up on him, beat the shit out of Cartman, and tell him to stop being stupid or cut off that hand. Like, that's where I wanted them to go with it. It's like, just take his hand and cut off his left hand. Because that's his Mitch Connor hand. Just cut it off. I don't take a butcher knife and just chop her off. I would love to see that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's fair. I, All right. Yeah. Every so, time he, yeah, <laughs> turns when he turned out to be the, the main bad guy, I was like, oh, that's really dis- disappointing. But yeah, I had fun and I enjoyed the the humor. So oh, I I absolutely love this game. Uh, like I beat it in two days. So I'm not, I, this is definitely probably not the best game I played this year. Like I think Breath of the Wild, maybe Mario Odyssey, are up there. But I would say maybe top five for me this yeah. year. I'd probably I'd maybe put it. Uh, I put it right around probably where Sonic Mania is in my book, so... Fair enough. Yeah, so I really liked it. Uh, we're going to do a final... Uh, just finish up by with an Are You Buying It? So some fan theories about South Park, and then we're done. So that's pretty exciting. Our yes. top five... Our top five South Park fan theories. Number one, Officer Bar Brady isn't a real cop. He's just the town idiot, and everyone goes along with him dressing up as a cop. Do you buy it? I do kind of buy it, because I don't see how he would pass, like, any cop training. All right, number two. Kenny, Stan, and Kyle are still friends with Cartman because he's right so often. So even though he's uh, extremely uh, sociopathic and a liar, lots of the things he believes are often become true. Are you buying it? Uh, I don't know. That one's a little bit tougher. All right. South Park is just the world the kids see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of shit that happens and they're not even involved. I'm like, I'm walking away from this one right now. Walking away. All right. Number four. Cartman is deeply in love with Kyle. That I do believe. Yeah, I definitely think there's something there. Although he does have a new girlfriend, Heidi, so which is probably the best part of the new season. So, yeah. Very, very. I was like very happy that they kept her around and that mm-hmm. stuck around from the previous couple of oh, episodes. That episode of her getting dressed for with the costume is just so great. <laughs> oh man, I've because anyone with that. a girlfriend, yeah, anyone with a girlfriend, you've been there. You're like, oh, can we go? It's been an hour. Yeah, and I'm just getting ready. I need some some lip gloss. Oh, I've got one more thing. Like, uh... And number five, South Park is in the middle of a science supernatural experiment that's why so much weird stuff happens i can believe that 
Kind of like uh. All right. So I was what like three for five like two and a half for five 50 percent yeah i'll give you three or five nice nice i passed i passed so uh did we miss anything we didn't go into a lot of the details but i think that if we spoiled every joke that's not very fun so i think we talked for an hour and a half on this so Uh, just yeah i think we did a good job i was gonna say i was like i feel like we talked for an hour and a half and we missed a lot of stuff in the game so yeah i mean we can always come back and maybe redo if if fans if you guys are listening and you're like oh man you guys missed so much can you go back i would love i'll go replay it through this game and like just do do like a top 10 jokes or something or like 10 things i found interesting yeah. no problem or do like shorter episodes but do one per day or something yeah yeah that we could do that Speaking of readdressing things, we have to talk about something after this podcast in private. So, sorry, listeners. Not only we're up front, but we're going to do something behind the scenes today. Uh, so, we didn't miss anything. We're good. Hour and a half. It's, it's a long one. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you're enjoying the game. Uh, yeah. Uh, keep on stuff. I guess we say goodbye at this point. Yep. Bye. See you guys. Thank you for listening. You can contact Podtendo at Podtendo Podcast. Email us at podtendo at gmail.com or check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash podtendo. The music of the podtendo was used without permission and is property of Nintendo. We must stop dirty language from getting to our children's ears. We must go fight the source of it. But what is the source? Oh, that's easy. Times have changed. Our kids are getting worse. They won't obey their parents. They just want to fight and curse. Should we blame the government or blame society? Or should we blame the images on TV? No, blame Canada. Blame Canada. For the beady little eyes and flapping heads of all the lies. Blame Canada. Blame Canada. We need to form a full assault. It's an assault. Don't blame me for my son Stan. He saw the darn cartoon and now he's off to join the clan. And my boy Eric once had my picture on his shelf. But now when I see him, it tells me to fuck myself. Well, play Canada. Play Canada. It seems that everything's gone wrong since Canada came along. Play Canada. Play Canada. They're not even a real country anyway. My son could have been a doctor or a lawyer, rich and true. Instead, he burned a plaque of piggy on a barbecue. Should we blame the matches? Should we blame the fire? Or the doctors who allowed it to expire?